bienvenidos a las clases virtuales de enseñanza para niños que tenemos cada jueves a las seis y media en Gracias a las Naciones. Hi everyone, welcome to the 40 Days in the Word virtual classes for Grace Kids Church. We are very happy to have you with us. Uh, we will be meeting through YouTube. Uh, I, you can find us at Grace to the Nation's YouTube page and also Facebook page every Thursday at 6.30 in the afternoon. Thank you and we'll see you then. Madam Savan Tose, Madam Tse Kristen Gregoracho, Grace to the Nation, Fatisha Kokirako, Kwakane at 6.30. So again, the Kuri to be quick Shaman is to give him a number of calls. Hi kids, welcome back to the second week of 40 Days in the Word. Last week was such a blast that we were able to have our first week um, learning what the Word of God was. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little pop quiz. So, what was the memory verse for last week? If you said Matthew 7, verse 24, you are correct. And that Bible verse was, whoever hears these teachings of mine and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now remember, last week we talked about the wise man and the foolish man and building your life on the rock. Do you guys know what the rock symbolizes? If you said the Bible, which is this, you are correct. Well, see, it wasn't so hard. So now that we learned last week what the Word of God is, this week what we're going to talk about is can we trust it? Now, the Bible, I'm going to just give you some fun facts here. The Bible, which is what I'm holding right now, is a pretty popular book. Now, it is not like a fairy tale book. It's not like books that are like Harry Potter or fairy tales. This is a book that is known all over the world. Did you know that the Bible is the biggest selling book, which means that it is the book that is, has sold the most in the whole entire world? Also, the Bible has many versions with different translations. So what that means is that other people from other countries that might not speak Spanish or English have the Bible translated in their own language. So French, Greek, Italian, and the list goes on and on. So the Bible is kind of a big deal. It is a really, really, really important book in our lives. And that, to me, shows that it is a book that is to be trusted. So what this lesson is going to be about is how we can trust the Bible and putting, really depending on the Bible and the Word of God. So in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says that all scripture, which... The scripture translates as the Bible because there is writing on there. Um, it is inspired by God. And when I looked into what inspired by God means, I found that he actually breathed into it. So when breath, like the one that I'm taking right now and exhaling, that means that I'm alive. So if God breathed into the Bible, that means that this is a living book that everything that's in here is alive, it is true, it is living, and it is so important for us to use it today. Um, in, chapter, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it also says that this writing in here is true, and it teaches us how to be on the right path, and it also helps us do good and not only do good, but also share it with others. In the activity we're gonna be doing later today, it, we're gonna to do a honey, a beehive, and in the colony of bees, all of them work together. 
they work together in building the beehive and making honey. So that is what God is telling us, that not only should we learn the word of God, but also share it to help others. And the memory verse for this week is Colossians 3.16. And what it says is, let the message of Jesus fill our lives, teach and counsel each other with all wisdom that he gives. Now last week, if you remember, Jesus told us about the wise man and the foolish man. So if Colossians 3.16 says that he provides us with wisdom, we have all that we need to be able to do good, to share with others, and therefore we can trust his word. Now, not only did we just learn that the Bible is the most famous book in all the world, um, but also we just learned that it is a living word, right? God breathed into this. He inspired everything that's written in here. And I like to look at it like in the video from last week. It is our instruction manual. It gives us direction. It teaches us what's wrong and what's right. And it helps us help others. Now, the next video that we're going to show is going to teach us a little bit about how to trust the Word of God. So sit back and pay attention. God's story, the Bible. So part of God's story is about the Bible, and it goes like this. The Bible is no ordinary book. It's all about God and how much He loves us. Now, you might think the Bible's a big, long list of rules and names, but it's not. You might also think it's about a bunch of perfect people who always followed God's rules. But really, the Bible is a bunch of stories, poems, letters, and even songs that are all telling one big story that have been put together into one big book. And everything in the Bible is true, like how God created the whole world and everything in it. And the story is about Jesus, God's son, and in between, there are lots of stories written by all kinds of people. But the amazing thing about the Bible is, all these stories came from God. The first part of the Bible is called the Old Testament. It tells the story of God's special family, the Israelites, and how God promised that through them, He would bless the whole world. To help them do that, God gave them the Torah, or the law. These were ways for the Israelites to live differently than other nations, by welcoming people who were different from them forgiving each other and following God. The only problem was no one was able to follow all the rules. This is what the middle part of the Bible is about. People tried as hard as they could, but they kept making mistakes. And every time God forgave them and promised them that someone would come, a king, a rescuer, who would actually follow all of God's rules and show us what God is like. Well, Israel waited a long time time for the king, who was also the rescuer. While they were waiting, Israel had good kings and not so good kings. Sometimes the people in charge forgot about God and started to worship other gods. And sometimes they even got taken over by other countries. And whenever God would do something amazing, like when he saved three guys from a fiery furnace, or when he sent messages to prophets like Jeremiah and Ezekiel, or when ordinary people like Ruth decided to be a part of God's family. People would write it down. They wanted to remember what God had done and teach their kids what God was like. He's powerful, he's loving, and he's good. In some stories, God reminds us he's a good king, powerful and mighty, someone who saves his people from danger. In other stories, God reminds us he's a good father taking care of his children or like a good shepherd, gently taking care of his sheep. Now that's all in the Old Testament. The next part, the New Testament, starts with four books full of stories about Jesus. Jesus is God's son, and he lived a perfect life without breaking any of God's rules. He taught people about God and showed people how to be like him by helping those who were poor and sick. Then Jesus died for our wrong choices and came back to life which was a pretty amazing thing. It was so amazing that people made sure they wrote down the stories about Jesus. And as more and more people started following Jesus, there were more and more amazing stories to write down. Like when the Holy Spirit came down like wind on Pentecost, or when people who followed Jesus performed miracles. 
or even when one of Jesus' friends, John, had a crazy dream about what it will be like when Jesus comes back to rule the entire world. After Jesus came back to life and then went to heaven, yeah, that happened. People who followed Jesus wanted to put together all these stories about the law, the Israelites, Jesus, and the early church into one big book. It took a few tries before everyone agreed on what parts should be in what order, but that's how we have this big book called the Bible. Today, people still read the Bible all over the world because what was true a long time ago is still true today. God always stays the same. God still speaks to us. He forgives us and loves us, and he's always good. And when we read the Bible, we can still learn about who God is and what he's like. The Bible says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. And that's the story of the Bible. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. The Bible is a book of stories about God. The Old Testament is about Israel. The New Testament is about Jesus and his followers. We can still learn about God today. And that's a part of God's story. All right, guys, so now it's time to pull out your yellow envelopes. And this week, you guys have different materials in there. But use the glue stick that you had from last week. That is for you to use this week, too. Something else that you're going to need today, too, is going to be crayons. And you don't need your whole box set of crayons. You only need yellow. All right? And welcome back, Kaylee! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> so Kaylee's going to walk through us um, our today's activity. Okay, so you're going to need your papers and then the little bees on here as well. Oh, little bees! And so what we're going to do is pretty simple. You're just going to... We color it first, right? Yeah. So you're going to get your yellow, and you're just going to, however you'd like, just color it. So this, I thought this was called a honey honeycomb. And it was not. It's called a beehive. <laughs> so the reason why we're using a beehive is because, if you didn't know, beehives is a community, it's, it holds a community of bees. And what they do is that they work together, so each bee helps each other out. Have you ever seen like videos of bees and how they live in their honey, in their beehives? On the History Channel. On the History Channel. Or the National Geographic. The National Geographic. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Alright. Wow, you're a fast color. <laughs> And once you're done, you're going to tape this paper onto this one, so it's kind of like like a background, yeah, like, yeah. like a frame. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put glue around. So 
So it has to be kind of centered, right? Once you're done, you notice you have these little bees. Um, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna stick them onto the the beehive. The beehive, not the honeycomb. <laughs> the beehive. <laughs> and these can go wherever. Yeah, around. So kind of like if they're flying around their little beehive, like so. Have you ever been stung by a bee? Yes, when, when I was little, I would get stung a lot. My sister has never, but I guess. I got stung once. It hurt. <laughs> yeah. Have you got stung by a bee? <laughs> and there you go. Voila! Behind. Very cool! Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for week two. But before we wrap up, Let's end in prayer. Sound good? To get us ready for the week. Um, and before I, I, we, start, we end in prayer, don't forget to bring this back on Sunday so we could put the lesson, the activity for next week, which is going to be week three. And also, don't forget to memorize Colossians 3.16. Sound good? All right. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the time that we were able to spend together virtually, Lord. We declare that every child that is watching this, this live stream, Lord, is fully, Lord, enriched by your word, Lord, that they're able to learn more about your word and learn how to trust it, Lord, and totally depend on it. Thank you, Lord. I declare blessing in their lives and also within their family, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Es el amor de Dios, el amor.